YouTubers and uh, welcome back to part two of my um, DIY uh, synthesizer tutorial. Um, in part one I covered how to make the saw core oscillator and the other video I covered how to make the exponential converter. Now, if we look up here this is where our control voltage comes in and goes into the inverting input of op amp B. Now we have op amp A, B and we have a C and a D and we are using a TL074 uh, op amp which is quite a readily available part. Nothing too fancy, not the best. You can uh, go for something like a, I don't know, there's quite a few other more precision ones out there. You can try 084, any, any quad op amp will do. Right, anyway, in this video I'm going to show you uh, some of the wave shaping circuits. Now what we have is our next op amp which I'm going to call D and on D we will have pin 14 and we will have pin 12 and pin 13 inverting input non-inverting input. Now this is our saw out from pin 7 as we talked about in the last video and what we need to do is take a cable or we'll jump a wire around from there and we need to pop that into pin 13. And you can see the circle I've put there, that is a connection node. Any straight through line is not a connection as, as you can see here we go straight through into pin 6. So we have a connection node there and again, if we come here, we will take from the, in, the inverting input two resistors, one to the minus voltage and one to the plus rail, and both 100k in value. And that is basically it. Now when we check the output of the of pin 14 we should have a square wave which is pretty much at 50% duty cycle now what we can do with that is make that a variable pulse pulse stroke square wave so what we will do is have another connection node and take a cable straight into a potentiometer and that arrow there is the wiper is the middle wiper and we have so we'll call the wiper point two and each side could be either pin one and three now what we'll do is we'll take the inverting input into the middle of that potentiometer which will look something like so. So we can see we have outside pins and the middle pins and it really doesn't matter which way around you do this. And what we'll do is take pin 3 to the plus voltage and take pin 1 to the minus voltage. Now this will give us a variable pulse width to the to the minus voltage when we turn this potentiometer one way this will give us a negative pulse stroke square and when we turn it the other way we'll get a positive pulse stroke square and when we're in the roughly about the middle we should be about 50% duty cycle for pure square. Again, one of these things, use a scope or use your ears. You should know slightly the difference between a pulse and a square. So, and that is basically it. Now, what the other thing we can do to this is make it a width modulated um, square wave. So rather than having to turn the potentiometer to get it to go between a positive pulse or negative pulse or 
a square, 50% square. What we can do here is if we, we use this same oscillator design, or should I say schematic, and I'll take out this diode here. One thing I forgot to point out in part one, this diode here must be a shock key diode, as we can see the symbol there for a shock key, as opposed to just a normal standard signal diode like a 1N4148. So if we get rid of the diode and we'll get rid of the CVN, what we basically have is At pin 7 we will get a triangle wave, at pin 1 we will get a square wave. So what we need for pulse width modulation is the triangle wave which is mainly used on synthesizers. Some use a sine wave. But here we are going to keep it simple and this capacitor we are going to give it say a value of about 0.1 or should I say 0.1 microfarads or you can go for 1 microfarads. Now the size of the capacitor rating will get, will de pretty much determine the speed. So what we have now, we can have, so if we have C1 and we'll have C1 as say one microfarad, or, or we could go upwards, we have an LFO now. So this will be in a very low frequency range. So we can use this low frequency triangle to modulate, directly modulate this pulse. And all we have to do is literally you can pop a resistor in there if you find the intensity too much is take the triangle out resistor into the same node and that can be any value of your choice play it by ear with that one and see what works best and this triangle wave now will modulate the pulse automatically of our square wave so we will go between negative and positive going through square which gives you that thick um, detuning effect but before we can get this LFO to work we must connect pin 6 and pin 1 to a potentiometer so We'll give that a little variable resistor symbol and we will take pin 6 here and pin 1 to the wiper and this here I'll we'll just call that pin for, oh, sorry pin 3 of the potentiometer if we look at it say this way will be non-connected depending which way you want it you can either have e e either side but we need to leave one extreme side un unconnected now you have a variable uh, frequency range so we can vary the frequency of the actual um, triangle LFO into the pulse width modulation and there we go it's as simple as that so all the parts you need is a couple of a uh, couple of resistors for the voltage divider maybe a resistor for the LFO Again, if you look at this, this is pretty much the same build that I've used for every single oscillator on my boards and for the VCOs as well. So we just have an oscillator to do the, um, for the LFO, for the pulse width modulation. And here we can see we have, we can width modulate the, um, the square wave. Now on these p parts here, we have a choice as well to put some resistance in there it, it all depends on whether or not which kind of range you want because it, it will be very dependent on your power rails if you have plus 12 volts my, plus minus 12 volts or plus 15 and minus 15 the values will vary so we can try and get that so we pretty much hit 90 um, 90 percent duty cycle positive and 90 percent duty cycle negative otherwise we're going to get nothing so if you feel you've you've you've, you've wired this up and you've got nothing the the, the um, problem probably is that you've got the pulse width set way out of range that we've got we're 100 percent and we've got 
nothing. So we need to bring it back to between 90 and 50, positive or negative. Anyway, I'll be back for part three to show you the triangle wave shaping. Thank you for watching, people.